All right, Purdue, you, you, you've invested. You, you've demonstrated this is an important aspect of certainly the, the, the sports program, but we view football as a, as a way to activate our 450,000 living alums. And I think people are seeing that we stepped up to bring a staff here. Daryl said we're going to hire the very best possible staff. We we thoroughly, you know, I told him, I said, I want to go back to Pasadena. So I told you guys two weeks ago, I want to go back to Pasadena. Mike, uh, Mike Merrick from the Associated Press. Coach, can you talk a little bit about, uh, my understanding is the fact that you're going to coach the bowl game for Kent State? I am. And you want to get out on the road and make sure the commits are there and that. Can, how do you balance that? Well, my calendar looks like this. Um, <laughs> I'm going to fly back tonight. I will spend the next two days at Kent preparing to practice. We'll practice on Friday and Saturday. I'm going to hop in the car, drive back over here Saturday, spend Sunday, Monday through Thursday uh, talking to the previous staff, interviewing the previous staff. Um, and at, during the daytime, at nights, I'm going to go visit recruits. And I'm going to go back out for our practice. We're in finals next week, as you are, correct? Um, and then um, we'll have a four-day practice right before Christmas break. We'll take a few days off. I'm going to come back out here with the family. We're going to uh, look at some houses on the 21st and 22nd. Take a day off for Christmas. And then um, go back out there. And we're, we're going to fly out to uh, Mobile on January the 2nd. And then I'll be here permanently January 7th. Let, let me add that under the NCAA rules, there are provisions that allow you to recruit at one institution and coach at another. It requires some waiver provisions that we're prepared to seek. So he'll be within the guise of the NCAA rules. Always. <laughs> you remember the first value, integrity. That's good. Sam, uh, this question's for all three of you. We're starting with the coach. Just the significance of being the first African American you know, football or basketball coach here and one of the fourth of the big time. I got that same question my last job. <laughs> uh, it's an honor. It's an honor to be here. And, uh, you know, I just, I love making a difference in kids' lives. And so be it that race has to something to do with it, but I don't put much into that. Did you want to touch Yeah, I, I would just say that, that uh, to me, the email that I got from uh, a mother of a former player from Ohio State today. Uh, probably symbolize why he's the right guy, uh, irregardless of race. And and that mother said, you know, I don't normally send an email to a, an AD, but my son was recruited at Ohio State and played for Darrell. She said the Purdue people don't know what a gem they've gotten. And so I said, you know what, she didn't have to take the time. I sent that on to all of our parents because I want them to understand the commitment we have to these young men. We can get, if they feel that commitment, they'll play at a level, they'll study at a level, and they'll comport themselves in a manner that will make Purdue proud, make their families proud. Dr. Sands. Well, we hired Coach Hazel because he's the best person for the job, period. Uh, that's it. Um, life experience and relating to uh, student athletes and, and all the stakeholders is an important part of uh, being a head football coach. And, um, I'll let him describe what his life experience uh, brings to that, but uh, we're just glad to have Daryl Hazel. Let's go back to Mike here, and then we'll get Mike from here. Oh, I'm sorry, Stacy. Yeah. Yeah. Coach Stacy Thirty with Golden Black. Uh, we were able to kind of talk to you, a couple of your former coaches today, and they keep saying how how you disciplined and detail oriented and but you still are able to kind of balance kind of the the tough guy kind of thing to relate to the players I guess how would you describe your I guess why you got to this point in terms of your characteristics and, and how you're able to relate to the guys I think there's a, a criteria you set with your guys and I think you have to be demanding and you have to hit all your checkpoints in order to be successful and uh, you lay it all out for them in the beginning and you say, here are the expectations. There are no shortcuts. And then as they hit those checkpoints, uh, you're able to pat them on the back and embrace those guys. But uh, there's a certain level of expectation that everybody in the organization must meet. And that's, that really goes back to my, my whole philosophy as a, as, as a program, is that every 
person in the organization. The A players must get A's. And if you're an A player, you have to get an A. If you're a B player, you have to get a B. No one in the organization underachieves. If you can do that, you're going to be pretty successful. For, uh, for Coach Hazel, uh, just how quickly do you want to get your staff assembled? And you know, what, what is your timeline for that? The most important thing is I get it right. So however long it takes, these guys touch these guys' lives every single day. And the most important thing is to, for me to take time, make sure we're getting the exact person that we need, and mesh this all together. I mean, it's, there's nine guys, ten guys in the room, knowing these idiosyncrasies at 10 o'clock at night. All those things are important. And their work ethic, uh, and making sure that our kids get the right guy around them. That's the most important thing. So I don't really have a timeline. Yeah, Coach Jeff Washburn, Lafayette German Courier. Um, in talking to a variety of this question is just, uh, for Coach Hazel, it's Mike Clapping in from the Bale Pie. Uh, Coach, I, I, you mentioned that you had met some of the players. I know the meeting was brief and everything. Just your gut feeling, what was your uh, first impression of the players? Eager, very eager and uh, excited. Uh, you know, anytime you have uh, a change in leadership, there's a renaissance, and the guys that might be pigeonholed. Now it's a, it's a breath of fresh air for those guys. And everyone's slate is clean. And I just felt like there was, the weight was lifted off some of their shoulders and they're ready to go. They're very anxious to get going. Coach, piggybacking off of that, what did you tell them about the future and the expectations, what you have for them from your own? I, I told them to do a good job in the finals next week. Uh, I told them that uh, this group is going to do something very special. The, the most important thing is that we bond together as a team. Nobody cares who gets the credit. And uh, we'll move forward and we'll do some great things. Correct. Coach, just your Kent State team this year, um, going from five wins last year to 11 wins this year, what, what was the big turnaround attributable to? Well, there's really no one thing that, that you can attribute it to. I think there's a... We moved some guys around. I think there's a strong belief system. There was a calmness in their eyes throughout the course of the uh, season. We were down three or four times in the fourth quarter. And there was no panic on the sideline. That comes from preparation. And uh, our guys prepare extremely hard. And they didn't worry about uh, being seven and one or eight and one. All they cared about was preparing for the next contest. Stacy. Coach. How would you describe your personality? <laughs> um, that's hard. Well, I, I think that I like to uh, give everybody a chance. Give everybody a, a, the thought that they have a chance to be successful. And it's genuine, it's sincerely genuine. And everybody has a purpose and a role to help us win football games. Uh, Alan Carvey from GoldenBlack.com. You're, all coaches are, you have to start foot by playing, you were a receiver. Were you a slot receiver? Were you fast? Uh, tell us about your playing days and, and what impact that had on, on your coaching style and philosophy. That was 30 years ago. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you look fast. You know. um, I played at Muskingum University, and we didn't have a slot receiver back then. We had two wide guys. Um, and I was where the quarterback needed him to be. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, one more here from Pete. Yeah, and I guess uh, I don't think this has been addressed, but maybe from, from Morgan, can you talk about the terms of the contract? Six years, and we'll have the financial details come out later. And thank you all. I'm sure Dr. Sands, Morgan, and Darrell will stick around for a few minutes, but we do have, have Darrell come down on a plane eventually. But I'm sure they'll stick around for a few minutes if you want to come and uh, do a little meet and greet. Thank you all. <laughs>